All right, welcome back. Um, this will be my last video for, for this section of probability. Um, after this, uh, one of my other colleagues will be taking over. So, yeah, let's do exercise 4.8. So we have talked about um, how to um, find um, the range um, or the minimum and the maximum of intersections and unions um, of joint um, probabilities when we are given the marginal probabilities, but we really haven't done a nice example. And this is the purpose of exercise 4.8. All right. So we're given in this case, probability of A is 0 0.6 and probability of B is 0 0.3. And we want to find the minimum and the maximum of, uh, of the following events. The first event being uh, the probability um, uh, of A intersection B. All right, so the first event being probability of A intersection B. Forget about this, this is the answer, but um, I didn't have enough space down there. That's why I just throw it, it. I, I put it here, uh, but um, this is the last thing we'll be talking about, okay? So um, uh, we'll, this is the last thing we'll be talking about, but um, okay, the first thing is we want to establish whether the events can be mutually exclusive or not. You guys, you should remember that. So there should be a border here uh, and here as well, there should be a border. Uh, let me put these borders in black because I think I need them in black. Um, there should be a nice border here and here as well. And here, it's a bit fat. So having said that, we're basically saying we establish whether they, are, can, they can be mutually exclusive or not. Indeed, these events can be mutually exclusive. Why are we saying that? Because the probability, um, this, will be, this will have to be in blue because it will confuse you. Probability of A plus probability of B is equal to 0 0.6 plus 0 0.3, which is equal to 0 0.9. So if, if the probability, if the sum of the two probabilities is 0 0.9, which is what you're doing here, you're saying 0 0.9 is less than one. It's less than or equal to one, okay? So if it's less than or equal to one, it's possible that the events are disjoint or they are non-overlapping. That's why I was saying, good, they can be mutually exclusive. And once we have that set up, if they can be mutually exclusive, we know that the probability of uh, of the intersection um, under that, con under that um, condition of being mutually exclusive is going to be equal to zero. And automatically we can start thinking about this zero here as being the minimum, all right? Why? Because probability cannot go below zero, all right? So think about it that way, okay? And of course, we can ignore this part here. We can ignore this part here. Why are we ignoring that part? Because we're basically saying here, the sum of the two probabilities is not uh, is not uh, uh, greater than uh, is not greater than uh, uh, one. So if it's not greater than one, we can ignore this part here. Okay, and of course we're basically saying if you look at the uh, third uh, scenario, which is the complete overlap um, uh, uh, with, with the probabilities that we have here, we have A is equal to zero point six and B is equal to zero point three. So B can only be inside of A if we're dealing with scenario number three. So don't forget this is scenario number one, scenario number two. Scenario number three, okay? So we have scenario number one, scenario number two, scenario number three, okay? So having said that, we're basically saying for scenario number three, um, uh, B should be contained in A, okay? Why? Because B has the smaller probability. The probability of B is 0 0.3, probability of A is 0 0.6. So A cannot be inside B because B has less elements than A. That's why the probability of B is smaller than the probability of A. So having said that, essentially, we are saying here, if B is contained in A, then the probability of the intersection of B, of A with B, is going to be equal to the probability of B. Uh, I shouldn't have said B there. I should have said the probability, uh, probability of B, which is 0 0.3, okay? So this 0 0.3 then is going to be our maximum maximum of the intersection. So here is our maximum, all right? Allow me to use uh, maybe the screen here. Here is our maximum of the intersection. Here is our minimum of the intersection. And this is how we get to this answer here. This is how we get to this answer here. So the, the minimum is zero. The maximum is 0 0.3. And we get to the answer over here. Of course, it's less than, it's, is um, it, it includes the minimum or the maximum. So we're saying 
um, probability of A intersection B is greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to three. All right, let's make sure you understand this. Take your time and um, try and understand whatever we're doing here is very, very, very important. All right, let's go to number two. Number two talks about a union. So what is happening here? Essentially, we're saying we can still look at the three scenarios, okay? We can still look at the three scenarios. We're saying that what are the three scenarios? The first scenario is whether they're mutually exclusive or not. Uh, the second scenario is for a partial overlap. The third scenario is for a complete overlap, all right? So, but because the probability of A plus the probability of B was equal to 0 0.9, we're saying they are, indeed they can be mutually exclusive, it's possible. And we ignore this because we're saying the sum of the two probabilities is not greater than one. So we ignore this part here. And of course, uh, we can also investigate the third scenario. So if they can be mutually exclusive, what did we say about mutually exclusive? If they're mutually exclusive, it means that if this is A and that is B, the sum of the two probabilities is going to be the union, all right? The sum of the two probabilities is going to be the union. Let me, allow me to go back to the notes so that you guys um, can, uh, can, can see where I'm getting it, okay? Um, if they're mutually exclusive, the union is the sum. The union is the sum of the two probabilities. Okay, please make sure you are following with the notes when you are uh, watching this video. Please follow with the notes as well. All this is given in the notes, all right. So the sum of the two probabilities in this case is 0 0.9. So that is our union over here, all right. We ignore this, because the sum of the two probabilities is not greater than one. So having said that, when you look at the third scenario, what happens? B is contained inside in, in A, uh, as we had in the uh, other scenario, because we remember probability of A is 0 0.6. Is it 0 0.6? Yeah, and probability of B, probability of B is 0 0.3. So B can only be inside A when you talk about complete overlap. You can't have A inside of B because A has greater probability than B. So if B is contained in A, the union is going to be the largest probability, which is 0 0.6, which is the probability of A, okay? Probability of A is 0 0.6, and that is going to be the union of the two events, uh, as we said here, the largest probability, the largest probability, okay? So having said that, uh, we're saying this is our maximum, and this is our minimum, and here is our minimum, here is our maximum, and this is the range, all right? That's our range, okay? Please make sure you can follow what I am doing over here. This is very important. Of course, if I say something, if, you, if your lecture or, or say something is very important, it, it means you can expect it for tests and exams, etc. So these kind of scenarios are very important, okay? You need to practice this using your practice tests, uh, uh, practice tutorials and uh, the tests, etc. Okay. So let's move to number three quickly. We're almost there. Number three, again, and number four is some form of extra practice. We're still talking about intersection here, but it's intersection of A, not with B, but with A, A with B complement, okay? So it gets a bit complicated, but if you think about B complement as an event in its own right, okay? So what is B complement? B complement, probability of B complement is one minus probability of B. So instead of dealing with uh, probability of A, uh, probability of, um, remember we're dealing with, we're still dealing with probability of A, 0 0.6, yes, there's nothing changing here. But in terms of the second event, the second event now is B complement. So we need to have the probability of B complement. That's why we are doing this, okay? That's why we're doing all this, because we need to have the probability of B complement. So the probability of B complement here is going to be 0 0.7. So if we do this, you can now see that the events cannot be mutually exclusive. Why are we saying they cannot be mutually exclusive? Because the sum of the two probabilities, probability of A plus probability of B complement is equal to 1.3. So because the sum of the two probabilities now is greater than one, they cannot be mutually exclusive, okay? They cannot be disjoint, okay? This is what we're saying here. So we ignore this one here. We leave, we ignore this part here. The events cannot be mutually exclusive. So if they cannot be mutually exclusive, we're now going to investigate these two scenarios here, all right? The, don't forget, this is the first scenario, the second scenario, and this is the third scenario. So what is happening in the second scenario? With well, the second scenario, we're basically saying that uh, um, um, uh, the, the, 
there is a partial overlap. So if there is a partial overlap, we're saying the reason why the sum of the two probabilities here was like 1.3 is possibly because of the, an intersection, which we're saying the intersection here should be 0 0.3. You remember we said the amount greater or, or, or the, the value greater than one, right? Let me go back and show you guys where we're getting all this stuff. The v amount greater than one, here we are. The amount greater than one. So the amount greater than one in this case, what is the amount greater than one? The amount greater than one here in this example is um, essentially we're saying 1.3 minus one, which is 0 0.3. And that becomes our intersection. Don't forget, we're dealing with B complement. We're not dealing with B here, we're dealing with B complement. All right, so this will be the um, um, intersection, probability of intersection. Then we go to the uh, last scenario, which is scenario number three. What is happening with scenario number three? A now is the one who is contained inside B complement. You remember, we're not dealing with A and B anymore. We're dealing with A and B complement. All right, it's very, 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 very important. And B complement now has a greater probability than A, so A is the one which is contained inside B complement. So if A is the one which is contained inside B complement, what are we getting to? We're basically saying that the probability of the intersection is going to be the, like we said in, uh, in the other case, the smallest probability. For intersection, when we are dealing with complete of, uh, overlap, the probability of intersection is the smallest probability. And what is the smallest probability here? Is the probability of A, if the probability of A is the smallest probability, then we're saying the intersection is 0 0.6, all right? If the intersection is 0 0.6, this becomes our maximum because this is less than this, okay? So if this, um, uh, I mean, whichever is smallest here of these two becomes the minimum, whichever is largest here becomes the maximum. So we're saying essentially our range, our range of, um, um, our range here is going to be uh, from 0 0.3, to 0.6. That's essentially what I'm saying. And this is very important, very, very, very important. Please make sure you understand this. All right, let me move to the last example. So now we're going to talk about the union of A with B complement. So we have talked about the intersection of A with B in the first, in, 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 um, um, in part one. In part two, we talked about the union of A with B. Part three, we talked about the intersection of A with B complement. Now we are talking about the union of A with B complement. All right, the union of A with B complement. So as, as before in exercise three, we have to find the probability. We're assuming that we're doing it from scratch. So we find the probability of B complement. So if you find the probability of B complement as before, you see that it will be, it's going to be equal to 0 0.7, okay? Because it's one minus the probability of B. So I say, based on that, uh, 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 if we sum the two probabilities, probability of A plus probability of B, we get 0 0.6 plus 0 0.7 as before, 1.3, which means that they cannot be mutually exclusive. In other words, there is definitely an overlap, okay? There is definitely an overlap. So if... Um, uh, if we talk about a scenario number three, sorry, scenario number two, scenario number two has nothing but uh, to do with uh, a, a partial overlap. So if there's a partial overlap, we're saying the union of the two events is going to be equal to one, okay? In this case, because the sum of the two probabilities is greater than, than, uh, than, than one, we can't have the, um, uh, I mean, the union to be equal to, I mean, the sum of the pro probability of the union to be equal to 1.3. You remember, we, if they were mutually exclusive, we would just sum the two probabilities. But here we can't just sum the two probabilities over here because you just summing the two probabilities takes us to 1.3. So we're saying we need to cap that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, that probability at one. Okay, the maximum of the probability can be is equal to one. So um, this becomes uh, our maximum of the union, all right? Uh, exactly, you can see um, that this value is here already. Um, let me use uh, as usual. Let's use that. So um, we're basically saying this becomes our maximum, that one, okay? And of course, um, as before in exercise, um, uh, in, in, in part three, we said A is contained uh, in B complement because A is smaller than B complement. 
So if A is contained in B, what does it mean essentially? We're saying the union in this case um, is going to be the largest probability. The largest probability here is the probability of B complement, which is 0.7. So you can see that 0.7 is, uh, uh, is uh, um, the, the, the union when uh, there is a, a complete overlap. And because mutually exclusive is uh, outside of the picture, um, 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 I mean, we only have two scenarios, scenario number two and scenario number three, this 0 0.7 becomes our minimum, okay? So we have a minimum of 0 0.7 and we have a maximum of, 0 point, uh, of, of, of one, all right? We have a maximum of one and we have a minimum of uh, 0 0.7. This brings us to the end of um, um, uh, my section on um, probability. So yeah, all the best with uh, the rest of uh, probability. Thank you.